All right, so we came back out to the airport first thing in the morning, fired it up, no leaks on the ground, went and flew about a five minute local sortie, came back in, no leaks airborne. So we uh, got ready to head off and go for Lamar, Colorado. It was gonna be a nice day because it was clear. We had some strong southerly winds, which meant I was gonna be riding a nice tailwind, something that we definitely didn't have the first day. So I thought this was entertaining. Yesterday we saw abandoned coal power plant. Today, here's an old abandoned windmill. We've got towers that have broken off. We've got several units with broken blades, some that have fallen down, some that have been taken down. All right, that's about 25 mile an hour faster than anything we saw yesterday. Lots and lots of really dry farmland out across the Texas Panhandle. It's a cool town I've always heard about, Texoma. It is on the border, Oklahoma to the north or the left, and Texas to the right. Have to laugh though, divided right in the middle of the town, but the railroad and the highway that goes through it goes through on a diagonal. They do have a nice little airport with both the paved and some grass runways thing about winter wheat this is not what a field should look like in the spring that is absolutely terrible winter wheat field that they have fired up the circles irrigation system just to try to save the crop but that's expensive water there's no way to make a living doing that this is a dry river this time of year that should be flowing not a drop of water inside. I like anywhere. this. Speeds are picking up 121.8 mile an hour. This is in a J3 Cub. We're getting Sorry somewhere. For these cows, they should be out enjoying some nice green grass. And there's just nothing out there. They are picking their way through the weeds. This is coming into Lamar, Colorado. Winds were kind of swirling. Wind socks all over the airport were picking different runways. Circled over the top a couple times. Here's the view as I land. It's a right front quartering crosswind, about 15 to 25. Well, we landed here at Lamar. Nice tailwind push, but we got out to another pile of oil, or puddle of oil. We pulled it, we thought about a couple things. That sump nut drain being one, and then we got to realizing that there is a air oil separator that's been added to this airplane, and it was clear full and simply vented itself out. So now we know exactly why the last two flights leaked and the ones before didn't. Great help from the locals here. <laughs> God, the cool thing about little airports is what you find. Check this out, a checker cab limo. I've never seen one of these. And this isn't even what I came into the hangar to look at. What I came to look at is not the twin Comanche, not whatever that thing is, but check out this Eagle spray plane. Second time I've come across one in the Midwest in a long time. The last one I saw was actually wrecked. This was built in the US, big 540 engine, glider style wings. They were a good flying airplane from everybody that had them. And then look at this, an old Pawnee 235 back here. Wow. That's a cool collection. This rudder was hanging in the FBO building. If anybody can tell me what it is, leave me a comment. Let me know. In Colorado, seem to have a little better moisture in a lot of places, though they've got better access to irrigation circles. This one I thought was interesting. It looks like they've got chicken farms set up in each of the corners or unused uh, areas to increase productivity. 
What are the disadvantages of a J3 Cub? Not a lot of room to uh, store things, and the one baggage compartment is behind your seat. So when you need something, it's a job to get it all dug out. Hope you guys uh, enjoy the comedy. This is where things start to get a little bit interesting. This Cub has a 12 gallon auxiliary fuel tank in the left wing quarter turn valve to transfer the gas down into the main header tank. The STC calls for you to do that after you've used two thirds of the main tank. So as I was headed north up to Torrington, Nebraska, got about two thirds of the way through, reached up there, hit that quarter turn valve and it was just turned super easy. It was obviously no longer engaged to the body of the valve. Here's some video of the previous J3 I flew with a more typical installation where there was a fuel valve or a clear tubing and you could actually watch the fuel transfer. But I was pretty sure that when I turned the valve on this airplane and it went so soft, unlike the other times, that I did not actually activate the valve. What that meant was I now had trapped gas. I had two hours of gas in my left wing that I couldn't use. It was time to do what you need to do anytime you've got a fuel emergency. Conserve, confess, and climb. I started climbing up and immediately said I need to go to a new airport. Instead of going up to Torrington, Nebraska, I pointed straight north, put the tailwind all the way on my tail, giving me a nice push, and we were headed to Colorado Plains Regional out in Akron, Colorado. It was only about 35 miles to Akron versus 150 miles on up to my original destination. The fuel was going to be tight. I was pretty sure I was going to make it okay, but I kept looking at all the farm fields along my flight path underneath me. I had lots of good options if I needed to, but I was just coming down to my VFR reserve indicator on the cork up on the main tank. I got up to Akron, I flew around the west side of town, stayed high, got into the downwind and flew a uh, basically a power off profile down and touched down. The cool thing was there was a maintenance shop right there and this beautiful airplane attracts attention anywhere you go so when i pulled in two mechanics came out wanted to look at it they asked uh, where i was going what i was doing and i said i needed a pair of pliers and a screwdriver and about five minutes later the mechanic had the valve fixed all was good so big thanks to the guys at hayes aviation in akron colorado if you're ever in the area grab gas from them they do wonderful paint jobs and maintenance as well well, after the Hayes mechanics fixed the fuel valve, I taxied down to their fuel pumps. Five thirty-nine. Who would have thought that we thought that was cheap gas compared to now? I just enjoyed the geography and scenery of western Nebraska up in the Panhandle by Scotts Bluff. Absolutely gorgeous. Of course, the skylight made it nice to look up, and enjoy the blue skies, but. And that's just some cool looking stuff as then we cross into the border of Wyoming. I overflew the airport at Wheatland, Wyoming. I noticed this collapsed hangar with a four or five airplanes, a lot of classic Cessnas in it. Come to find out that was due to wind and, and a big winter storm, heavy snow loads that occurred in 2021. Sad to see it hasn't been cleaned up or repaired.
Well, as I was making my way across Wyoming, I got a text from a friend, Kathy Joe. She said, hey, we're up at Backcountry Super Cubs, just to the southeast of Douglas. Stop in on our grass strip there at the company and check out the new airplane that we just finished building and we're breaking in the engine. This is a beast of a four-person Super Cub, 540 power. Look how tall this thing is. I'm six foot two and I don't even come to the bottom of the spinner. Cannot wait to see this plane in action. Well, here's my departure out of Backcountry Super Cub Strip. A little bit of a downhill, a little bit of density altitude, so I just keep it down low, let her roll, let her get some airspeed, then climb up over the river, turn around, and head the 12 miles up to Douglas for fuel. After Douglas, I had about two and a half hours of flying to make it to my final stop for the night, Sheridan, Wyoming. A lot of beautiful Wyoming country to fly over. Winter had not given up in Wyoming yet. This snow was just from a week ago. But look what down here I see. This is an old Sikorsky helicopter on the back of this trailer. That's pretty cool. I wonder where it was going. This is a pretty typical scene when you're flying a J3 to the northwest across Wyoming. The cars and trucks are going faster than we are. Well, as the evening light was starting to soften up, giving us beautiful views, Sheridan, Wyoming, my stop for the night was just ahead.
everybody. It is the end of the day. We are here in Sheridan and we've got the airplane fueled up. The cool thing is I'm taxiing up to the fuel pumps and there's a guy in the 172 here and he gets out and he goes, hey, that's a good looking J3. I've got a 39 model. I said, well, this is a 39 too. And I was pretty sure that uh, he was still across the ramp from me, but it was, it was JT who I ferried his J3 to him. It was owned by Mark Brown, one of our crop duster friends in Washington. And in January, that's the, the J3 ferry trip that's on, uh, on the channel. And that's one of the reasons this owner called me to ferry uh, his J3 is because he saw the trip I did in the middle of the winter through Montana and Wyoming. So what a small world. He was, uh, he was laughing when I walked up and he's like, Jughead, it's you. I'm like, yeah, I said, I got you. I got you, JT. But uh, good day of flying, about 10 hours in the air. Got to see some friends in uh, Douglas, stopped by the Backcountry Super Cup spot. And uh, JT's calling, so I'm going to let you guys go. Put this here. There's the first one. She was a working farm cub. And here's the fancy show cub. And they're gonna spend the night together. Thanks for coming along on part two of this journey from Texas to Whitefish, Montana with this beautiful J3 cub. Tune back in next week. We'll see if I get it home on the third day of the trip. Jughead's out.